and welcome back to BlackBerry here at the BlackBerry booth at RSA 2023. I'm Steve Kofsky. I'm the editorial director for BlackBerry, and I would like to uh, have you introduce yourselves to a very special guest. Ismail, please introduce yourself. Thank you, Steve. Uh, my name is Ismail Valenzuela, and I'm the vice president of the threat research and intelligence team here at BlackBerry. I'm so happy to be here with you today. It's great to be back at RSA. I haven't been here since 2020, wow. before the uh, pandemic, and it feels like it hasn't lost a step, to right. tell you the truth. We have, uh, yeah, full, full house today. Yeah, very, very, very packed, and a lot of interest in what BlackBerry is doing, which is exciting to see. Some big announcements today, and one of them came specifically from your team, and I, maybe you tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I'm very excited about you know uh, showing to the world what we're doing at BlackBerry. There's a lot of people asking questions I'm like, "Hey, what are you guys doing? What are you up to?" And uh, obviously, you know, threat research and intelligence is a big part of cybersecurity. And uh, what we uh, are announcing this actually today, we released the, the second um, uh, issue of the quarterly threat report, uh, where we uh, you know give it a we, we talk about the highlights of what's happening over the last three months. So this one covers the uh, period starting December 1st and all the way to the end of uh, February 2023. So it's very you know fresh with a lot of uh, actual information on what we see in the trenches. And we're also uh, releasing our new product uh, or offering called Silence Intelligence, which is a uh, product coming out of the Steam in the form of uh, threat intelligence reports. You know, we can talk more about that if you want later. That would be great. You know, uh, having produced many threat reports in the cybersecurity industry over the past seven, eight years, usually it's an annual report, and usually the data is actually a year old by the time you publish the report. Right. So this is a big change. Yeah, I mean, nothing against annual reports. I think everybody likes to have like a you know summary, like we all like to do this in the industry, right? Towards the end of the year, what have we seen, what are we going to be seeing? But, you know, that becomes old really quickly, as you say, right? And, and I think that one of the, the, the things we want to achieve with these threat intelligence reports is, you know, something that CISOs can consume, something that, you know, small businesses can consume and make, help them to make decisions uh, on, okay, how do I uh, secure my business, right? My organization, what are the threats I need to keep an eye on? You cannot do that with, a, you know, waiting for a year with a report, and by the time you see that data, as, you, as you're saying, it's all. And uh, you know, the attackers, they don't wait for a year to attack. <laughs> and as defenders, we need, to, we need to keep up the pace. Really, uh, producing software and tools for the cybersecurity industry, you're working against an adversary that is extremely in innovative that is constantly changing their tactics, techniques, procedures. So timeliness is so important, and I, I think that's really a key to probably the idea of threat intelligence, is you, you need to have your finger on the pulse at all times. Absolutely, I always say that it's all about time, right? Um, and, and it's important to, you know, when do you react to an attack? When do you detect the attack? When do you react to it? Um, and, and how you're able to mitigate that impact, right? So, so time is a very important factor. It's always been an important factor in you know, physical security. Like when you, when you go through a, a, you know, an accident or an emergency, like how fast will somebody react to that it can mean lives. And it's the same thing in cybersecurity, right? Um, it, it, it can, and as we are seeing with uh, attacks against critical infrastructure, it can literally mean lives, especially when you know, what we see, what we do in cyber, spans into, extends into the physical realm. Well, as the person who manages the blogs and social media for BlackBerry, I appreciate the timeliness of your team and, and their, uh, their acumen, their incredible attention to detail. Tell us a little bit about the team that you've built and the resources that you bring to bear in these reports. I'm glad you asked me this question because at the end of the day, you know, I'm just like here representing the team, but we have a really amazing team of uh, you know, men and women that are just like working really hard to uh, not just to understand the threats and you know, analyzing malware, doing reverse engineering and doing like really cool advanced stuff, but also at the same time they understand, they understand the threats, they understand, uh, sorry, they understand the, um, the context, they understand you know, the geopolitics 
about you know why we're observing something. Uh, because that's that's what matters at the end of the day, right? What's the motivation of the attacker? What's their intent? Whether you're looking at a cyber criminal perp that might be just like trying to monetize something, or we're looking at nation state, or you know somebody with uh, high capabilities, or it's targeting a specific industry in a specific location. Well, having that network, that global network of people who speak local language, understand the histories and the politics that are that are occurring, and also have contacts within different countries and different levels of um, the government and uh, law enforcement. I've seen so many examples of that from your team, and it always really impresses me very deeply that you have those, those abilities. Yeah, and actually, you know, since we're talking about the quarterly threat report, and, and I encourage everybody that is listening to us now that to go and check it out on our website, and you're going to find our links to the report on all of our social media right now. Uh, you're going to see, for example, attacks against um, some manufacturer uh, manufacturers in Southeast Asia, a Taiwanese company, for example. They got targeted because of a very specific, uh, a very specific objective, right? And when you analyze the malware, it's very interesting because it has geofencing capabilities. What that means is that the malware is only going to activate if it's uh, being executed out of a certain location. So that shows, you know, intent. Obviously, there's motivation behind that. The geopolitics in the in the area in Southeast Asia cannot be taken out of the equation. And when you put all these things together, now you understand. Okay, what's the risk for my organization to conduct business in that particular area? That's what we want to do. You know, with, with threat intelligence, it's more than just like feats, uh, IOCs. You know, give me stuff that I can put into my sim. As as history has demonstrated and experience, that's not strategic enough and and we you know that's why I'm very happy and, and proud to, to share that with uh, everybody here joining us at RSA well also um, I think one of the things that we struggle with in educating organizations about why they need to invest in cybersecurity is they often make the mistake of feeling that they're under the radar that they would not be there there would a nation state wouldn't target them they're a small company or a competitor wouldn't, wouldn't target them necessarily, or a, a criminal wouldn't think that that would be lucrative for them, and it's an easy trap to fall into. One of the things that threat intelligence does is it, it has the ability to even the playing field, and it's not just for large companies. Yeah, it's, it's not about that much about you know, how much money you have or how important you are, it's more about how, what's the impact, right? And how much you're willing to pay for you know, your business. Like if your business is not operative, right? It's, it's down, all your systems are down. Or if you have access maybe to, uh, you work with larger companies and you may be a small fish, right? But if you work with larger companies and I can leverage this access to get into somebody else. For example, uh, we talk about this in the report and we've seen a lot of these recently, we're gonna see a lot more, supply chain attacks. A small company that just builds a little tiny tool that you know it's sold on the internet for just a few bucks. Like you know, who's going to target me? Well, you might be that uh, uh, that you know contact a carrier that can be leveraged to get access into other organizations. That can be enough to take one of these small companies out of business. Uh, is that important to you? What's the impact of that? Right. So when, when we start thinking in terms of impact. Uh, rather than just like in terms of, oh, I'm not big enough, or number of people, or, or even budget, uh, we, we, we start to realize that, yeah, this is something that is it's for everybody. We have to make it simple enough, right? Understandable and accessible to not just the bigger companies, but also the smaller ones. So I think that brings us to some of the other announcements that were made today. And uh, uh, Silence Intelligence is a very important tool for companies of all sizes to understand where threats lie for them and, and to have a better uh, a tactical and strategic idea of the, the world in which they play. But in order to respond to that, we also have some tools that, that also uh, tend to equalize the weight of a different company. Yeah, and, and that's why you know, we're uh, very happy to show here at RSA what we do with uh, Silence Guard, for example, right? Which is a way of offering all of this in a managed uh, service. So you don't have to have like, you know, a large SOC uh, with a lot of uh, you know, people 
uh, tools and complexity that goes associated with, with all of that. The reality is that the majority of organizations that we talk to uh, that are not like large large organizations, they, they don't have the ability to have a SOC, to maintain a SOC, to you know, attract this type of talent, to maintain this talent. So, of course, you know, we provide this intelligence to large organizations, and you know, we work with law enforcement and security agencies around the world, and we could, we're going to continue to do that, but we, I'm also very proud that uh, what we're doing with Silence Guard, where we can embed this intelligence into our services and provide that in a managed way that simplifies all of this complexity and makes good cybersecurity available to everybody. You know, there's one other feature that uh, we're talking about here at the show that, again, is something that, that is a sweet spot for BlackBerry, working with large government agencies, with law enforcement globally, and it deals with how to handle critical communications. And could you talk a little bit about why is that important in cybersecurity? That, that's a good question. You know, I've, um, I've been doing instant response for a large portion of my professional life. And uh, I always say it's like, you know, you, 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 you'll get dropped like from with a parachute into like war zone, right? And yes, we're doing a cyber response, but at the end of the day, uh, that response is from a procedural perspective, from a process perspective, it's not that different from um, the way you respond to any other emergency. And I did some study back in the day on Katrina, for example, right, New Orleans, I think it was 2005, yes. the way that uh, that was handled. And a lot of the things that we use today to respond to emergencies in the physical world, they actually come from the lessons learned from Katrina. Wrapping up here at RSA 2023 with, with this discussion, what's your advice for people that are here at the show and also those people that are watching from afar? Well, if you're here at the show, uh, don't forget to you know stop by our booth and get the the amazing hoodies that we have. You know, we have long lines here. People like trying to get these hoodies and t-shirts are amazing. Um, if you are you know whether here or you're listening to us uh, from uh, you know, some other place, make sure that you can uh, read our blogs. Right, I think we have really good feedback from everybody in the industry. Mentioned the quality of our research and our reports. We have the new third quarter uh, quarterly threat research uh, report. And also, like if you see us around, like don't hesitate to you know uh, stop us and, and ask questions about what we do. Come to the booth, and you know I think a lot of people might be wondering, it's like what are we doing at BlackBerry in terms of cybersecurity, you know IoT and cybersecurity? Uh, it's really fascinating, but I think you know better than me telling you, I think it would be better for you to come by the booth and, uh, and experience it yourself. The proof is in the pudding, and uh, you're going to see that right here in the booth. Thank you so much for joining us, Ismail. Thank you, Steve. And thank you for joining us.